Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's webinar. New business models are evolving at an ever increasing pace. New consumer behavior, new marketing channels, do you even still understand your customers? And what does all that mean for your digital marketing strategies? My name is Friederike Rieder. I'm very happy to have Professor Markus Schödel with me here today. He's directed our Institute of Marketing and will shed some light on these questions. Now I would like to welcome Markus. Thank you, Markus. Thank you for Hello, everybody. Um, opening our digital sure. week with me. Thanks for taking the time. Yes. I wish you an insightful lunch break. <laughs> Thank you, Friederike. So, hello, everybody. A warm welcome. Uh, sorry that you spend your lunch now in front of your computer. I hope I make it as digestible as a good sandwich or something like that. Um, digital marketing framework. Um, maybe some words up in front about that approach that we took for that. You will see later on in the presentation that we tried to find something which is very sim similar to many stuff that we do in Saigon. We decided to do a framework to put questions and challenges into relations that are relevant for digital marketing strategies. For those of you guys that are waiting for the newest marketing hype and the newest marketing innovations or the last craze in blockchain and marketing, this is not the time to do that right now. This is about bringing decisions together that are necessary to find the right way to deal with digital marketing in your corporation. Um, besides this framework that I'm showing you right now, um, there's the chance to um, come to St. Gallen and do our Digital Marketing Academy for that reason, where we build around that whole framework, a whole course, a seminar of five days. If you're short to decide, it starts next Monday. The next round we will doing in November of this year. When you are interested, let us know. It might be interesting for your company as well. But let me jump into the presentation and... Um, give you, now I need to find the block that I need to click on. The non-technician talks about digital marketing, but I think I'm on the right way of doing, yes, there you go. Okay. So, um, maybe just up front, a little bit of a definitional stuff that might be of interest and might be important. Um, this is what we're seeing around the topic of digital marketing for the last weeks, months, even years. A lot of buzzwords running around. This is just an ad that was on LinkedIn for the new to be positioned or taken position to be taken as the CMO of Mondelez. And if you read this, our search for a successor will focus on finding a digital first, disruptive, innovative leader who can build on Dana's legacy, she was the predecessor, and mobilize breakthrough marketing in a rapidly changing global consumer landscape. I don't know which word is missing. I think no challenge is missing, but is this the real deal to have when we talk about digital marketing, I call this a little bit of a bullshit bingo, because when we try to drag down on the real challenges, we like to take it a little bit more precise and try to frame the challenge a little bit different. In the same way, a lot of marketeers just buzz around the next plain vanilla stuff, the next hype that goes around, the next uh, flavor of the month. And um, what we found out and how we want to position this approach that we took is that we're trying to frame it on the basis of what Jan Marco Leimeister here in St. Gallen is doing in, in um, information systems, information management. And he's always referring to the digitization challenge on three levels. As he's saying, it's one is products and services that are digital, that become digital. Then he says, there's a lot of challenges that we have when we go into the back end of a corporation until the supply side of things where we can standardize and digitize a lot of stuff for efficiency reasons. And the third one, and this is exactly where we come in, which fits perfectly to the, the idea of market-oriented management in St. Gallen. That's the front-end discussions that we have when we have customer-facing activities. And this is what we're focusing on. This is part of the marketing challenge. This is part of customer interaction. This is part of customer experience. This is the new world where we see marketing is going much, much more in the last years. And on the other hand, if we ask ourselves what is happening or what has to happen on the on the digital marketing front, I refer always to an article from McKinsey where McKinsey was saying there are three different dimensions that digital activities can add value to a corporation. The first one is creating value at new frontiers, which goes into the direction of innovation and even business models. We will skip that out a little bit today. One of the impo most important parts nowadays is from our point of view, creating value in the core business because digital, as you will see in a few seconds, is not something that is only new business. It's from a marketing point of view, right in the middle of society. And this means it's a huge challenge for all existing businesses to ask themselves, how can we di use digital activities 
to build value for our customers and custom value for our corporation as well. Alongside with this, and this is why I was already referring to the digital marketing canopy, we talk about building new capabilities. We need new stuff. We have new tasks, new challenges, new ways of working. And this would be sort of the focus that I would lay later on on that framework on digital marketing, just to show you where the real challenges are from our point of view, where we need to change our practices tremendously in the next one to two to three years at least. Um, for the agenda, I would like to set the stage a little bit with some remarks on what is happening on the technological side, how fast customers are adopting, and then coming to a point that I'm feeling always very challenged by, and this is the hesitation within companies to really admit that digital is a part of our world and trying to stick to an old world and not really moving forward into that new world. You will see how we try to tackle that. Then I want to give you an overview on the digital marketing framework, show you the whole, the big picture of it, what we want to achieve with it. And then I would like to highlight certain points within that framework that we think are new, are challenging for corporations and where we see the huge potential for corporations to turn towards this digital marketing activities and trying to help you to give you a little bit of guidance, what kind of access, what kind of concepts, what kind of ideas you can, you can take out um, of this webinar. And then we come to Q&A and I'm looking forward for your questions. You can already punch them in. I'm looking forward for any kind of discussions that we will have afterwards. On that one. Let me start out setting the stage. And um, normally I was arguing always with Moore's law that in half of the development time, the chips that we develop are two times faster than the generation before. So it gives you an exponential curve. Over the time, we found so many different ways that we talk about exponential developments that we need to put that into a bigger bucket. And don't blame me that we need to talk about singularity nowadays when we talk about artificial intelligence and all that stuff. Then there's the idea of Ray Kurzweil who came up with the idea. If you extend Moore's law long enough, you will come to the point where every atom in the world is gathering and has every information in the world in itself. And that, that's then the point that he calls the point of singularity. He puts it into a time frame by 2045, 2047. They are a little bit of a mix-up how many years it will be, 2045, 2048. But somewhere out to the beginning of the 2050s, we will have a situation that gives us artificial intelligence as, yeah, as the new mantra. Until that, we see an exponential growth on computing power, as, as I said, on bandwidth with the Gilders law, then Kreider's law on storage capacity. And all the ideas that are behind it, they, they don't seem so related too much to the marketing as we knew it. And for many years, we were struggling and understanding why Google is always saying exponential growth for marketing is so challenging. And let me just come up with one, one slide. Some of you might be knowing this, as I know that you're watching certain guys down there. You know this still from my lectures. But I still try to refer to it as a process that gives us ex exuberantly high challenges, not in the way that the content needs to be new, but the channels are exploding. And not only the channels, the way that we interact with customers, the apps are exploding. And everything is going into a direction where we see there is a huge choice that we can take out of these exploiting fields of uh, marketing communication as we can take it. From my point of view, the challenge is not even that there are so many new ways. The problem is that they're coming up so, so fast. If you haven't been into TikTok and into Twitch, you might be already out with the Generation Z that is merely using those and snaps. Snapchat is almost dead. The snipster, the flipsters, the chipsters and the hipsters and the plumsters that will come there, they pose the challenge to us. We need to find out, does it work? Is it economically meaningful going to into those certain channels? And this is one of the big changes that we have. We can't rely on those from 1995. They're exploding to us. And maybe just as it is used here in those uh, webinars in St. Gallen, I just put up a little quiz. I don't know if it is even a quiz, but it would be interesting to see and how, how you estimate how many people are online today in Switzerland and how many people in Switzerland are, um, um, are using a smartphone. The idea that is behind it, and, and you're right in your face with me, and, and I knew I have an educated audience down there, um, but this is still to some executives still, a challenge where we need to say, guys, you might not be on the right trigger if you believe that only 74% are online at least one hour a week in Switzerland, which is still something that you can see. And you're both properly right on both questions. It's 92% of all Swiss have a smartphone, um, are online at least 
for one hour a week, which is the normal measurement that we take. And it's about it's about 90% that have a smartphone, own a smartphone in Switzerland. Some will have two, some will have three. You can name those guys in your circle of friends and in your business community. But the point is, this is much stronger in the middle of our behavior as consumers, as many companies still believe and do believe as it is in many cases. No, I need to click that away, right? And just give you a, another figure that might be a little low because it's a public named named um, named percentage um, that comes out of a Google study. If you listen to people internally in corporations, especially when you go to the tech companies, they all talk about 75% of online research is involving and distressing the way that customers choose their purchasing place, if it is physical or non-physical, online or offline. The message for me is something different. If you have already 55% of customers that pre-research their products, what is it that you neglect digital? There's no way around it. 55%, more than half of your customers will vanish if you don't take care of them, even if you're still doing physical sales because customers pre-inform themselves and then they go online. Just to give the B2B guys some background and some footage, because many people were saying this is a B2C situation, not a B2B situation. Since the upcoming of the smartphone, from our point of view, that has democratized the use of online and smart um, and smartphones in the digital world. And when you look at those figures that were conducted and sampled up by Christian Schmitz, a colleague of mine who is working at Ruhr Universität Bochum, specializing on sales, and he's always, when you look at just 83% pre-research your company online if you're in B2B and 77% took it already to Google or got to feedback sites. There's another study study that says 12 engagements before getting directly with you in contact is the number of actions that customers take in B2B nowadays. And to add up on that, when you look at the millennials that we have in B2B purchasing departments, then you need to really change the understanding of what guy is sitting there and is waiting for you to give you, uh, to give you the quotes and give you the prices that he maybe wants to see in the proposal that you, that you give to him. Um, when you look at technology and then consumers, it's the opposite to management. And I'm always a little harsh. And I know when, when I would be asking you how far you took digital in your company, you will never end up with the head in the sand managers. Of course, they won't listen to those seminars. But for me, it's very important to, to, to argue. Um, there are some managers that are frustrated already as they say, guys, we're doing this now for eight years and nothing has happened. We have not really changed our revenue streams. We need to do more. Those launch and consolidate guys, if I take it from the bottom first, then launch and consolidate managers are saying, hey, we need help. And they're scared of coming out and saying, hey, we might be needing some help. Um, could you help us? But they are very confident then in what they do and they need help more in the direction of not identifying the latest trend, but giving them structure that, that, that helps them to, to put the questions into perspective when we go into um, building capabilities. Advice seekers and head in the sand managers, let me show you just a quote that I found, in a, not in a business meeting, it was a board meeting, in, it was in Germany, of course. Um, and they had nine ways to bypass digitization. And the background picture that you see there is deliberately there. Have no clue and be proud of it. Delegate the topic to the CIO and let the chief technician do it. Marginalize social media or just let me pick one. Spend as little money as possible on digital projects. Glorify the old days. People still talk to each other. Reject artificial intelligence, robotic and machine learning as Metopia. Stay calm. Next year, another so another so, um, so another pick will go around the village. Um, and this takes us exactly into that marketing, digital marketing framework. What we try to do is not to reinvent the wheel. What we try to do is we try to bring together certain challenges that we have in marketing around the topic of digital marketing. And you see as the asterisk is it's already version 2.2. We'll be going to version 3.0 by the end of this month when we finish the Digital Marketing Academy. We're always updated afterwards as well. And we start out with something that is more physical that you could think of. It's the customer journey. It's the stuff that customers walk through. It's the processes that, that they walk through. It's about the touch points that they want to use and try to identify the specifics where digital can play a role within, within, the, within the process. Around this, we gather the foundations for the digital marketing, which play a huge role in the interaction to the classical, to the traditional, to the offline world to say, we need to have an understanding of the brand positioning. We need to serve segments still, even if you believe there are no segments anymore, we can take that to the discussion room later on. And it's about the systems that you have deployed in your company. Is it SAP? Is it Salesforce? 
do you work with Hootsuite? Do you have the proper, um, proper stuff in place? Um, and as a basis for the upcoming then challenges and activities that we have, we define areas of, acti of activity that I'm always putting together in one question, which kind of interface do you use to be active on which kind of platforms, deploying which kind of tools in digital marketing? come back to that later on and we'll dig deep into that. The other one is knowledge generation and this is data sciences. This changes the field of research tremendously. But the idea behind it is we need to take it from data to knowledge. And this is a process that digital marketing is heavily involved in from generating the knowledge and the information, processing it, building the knowledge and disseminating then the knowledge into the, into the company and maybe to the customers as well. Which ends up then with actions that we take in marketing and they are different than the actions that we took before. I will elaborate on this. This is for me one of the biggest changes that we see as we don't start out with the analysis. We, most of the time we start out with actions. You will see that later on. But this is the big picture. Um, if you relate, want to relate closer to that one, we will give you with the handouts and with the additional information with the slide deck, um, I will give you a paper of, of three to four pages that sum up the whole approach in certain questions and buckets of questions with um, some intensive literature review that you will find there and some additional sources from our institute that help you then maybe to check how far you are with your digital health within your corporation. Now, let me focus a little bit on some of the challenges that we see in the field of digital marketing and what would be interesting. And I put it up with new thinking, new concepts, new work, because um, the starting point for me is, and of course, we're doing a marketing lecture, who shouldn't be missing, it's Steve Jobs, with one of the old, oldest quotes that I know from him, and I think it's one of the best that he ever gave, you have to start with the customer experience and work yourself backwards to the technology, not the other way around. He gave that in a speech press conference, you can Google it, you find it on YouTube, it's a very nice video. But the idea behind it is, is pretty simple. When we take the customer journey as the starting point, we take it from the customers, their experiences that they're expecting, and then we design the touch points in a way that they cater to the challenges that customers have in their customer journeys. Very briefly, very simple idea. Problem is, we don't start backwards with the process in many cases with the experience. In marketing, we tend to start with something that we have already in place. And this is the first point where I say, guys, new thinking is necessary because the sales funnel is no customer process. It's an array of your KPIs that they make sense to be put on customer processes. Have you ever heard of a customer says, I was for two weeks in the awareness phase. I am in five minutes going to the consideration phase. Please supply me with the adequate information. No, it doesn't work. It's a controlling tool, it's a performance measurement tool, which is important, but it doesn't represent your customer's journey. The customer's journeys that the customers run through look more like this, like a flight of a humblebee. And they fly back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. A friend of mine who's teaching biology at the ATH in Zurich, he gave me that picture. That's a flight of a humblebee. There is no linearity in there. And I can show you just out of one project, somebody from Franke Kitchen is there, you might be remembering that. These are the flights of a humblebee that we see when customers are trying to find information. They cruise around from their need, they start to go online. Some target groups in that example took that circle, the, those flights of the humblebee on the information side. They went eight times to Google on five different days before they choose the point of sale that they want to go for it to get advice on how to build the kitchen. Other target groups just Google once and go for seven times into the store. But these are the interaction hubs that we need to cater to when we talk about digital marketing. So it's not about getting the nicest influencer on our YouTube channel to do the next promotion. It's merely just more and really trying to help the customer within their customer journeys, which is the starting point from our point of view. As I said, I want to leave out a little bit those foundations because I, to you guys in talking branding, segmentation and systems wouldn't be adequate within the time that I've still left here. But on the other hand, um, I need to talk a little bit about the areas of activities that we have. And just wandering around the interfaces and the ideas that we have. Just another small survey on that one. How much of search is done via voice today? And what is the second most popular website for search in the world? Not popular by frequency, but when you try to search something. Go ahead, you can punch in um, at any time. And it's really interesting that what I see what is coming up here is pretty much uh, in line now, well, uh, you're a little bit too skeptical, guys. Push it a little bit more, especially with the, with the first question. Come on. Come on, a little bit more. Come on. Okay, it's the question of the sources that I retrieved to. And 
15% say search is done on voice, or 15% of voice is, the, voice is the search part. And I need to say it's 20 already this year. It's going to be 30 by 2020 by the estimates of Gartner. So this moves faster than you could think of. And when we're looking at, and this is really interesting because we have a head-to-head -to -head situation between YouTube and Amazon as the two search channels that are most preferred after Google. The funny thing is, it's the question which kind of source you use. If you use a source that is near to Alfera, you will find YouTube in the second place. If you take some more objective sources, it's Amazon that is taking over for that. Remember, make yourself an idea what that means. If your products are not listed on Amazon, you're not found in your search. So this is mind -goggling, not mind-goggling, but this is something that you need to reflect at least within your strategy when we talk about what kind, what kind of platforms you want to go for and what kind of uh, ideas you have in there. So, so when we first look at interfaces, I just take that briefly into the idea that I already tried to pose with that question. Yeah, of course, we, we're always talking about this, the fourth screen that might be coming up. And the fourth screen is substituted now by something that is a voice device. And I just picked out three. You can take all the others. You can take Cortana in there. You can take Siri in there. Just stick to the physical and the physical evidences that we have here. And these ones will change the way that we communicate with, with companies tremendously. Where Amazon is a sales channel and is nearly done, for, made and designed for doing sales, the search results that you get from Amazon are, re are really poor. They're better with Google, no wonder, but Google is using it more as a communication interface, not as a sales tool. This needs to be remembered because there will not be one interface. There will be a lot of them that we will try to array. Um, in our marketing activities. And um, platforms, everybody wants to be a platform, of course, everybody's looking into platforms. They are the biggest child, I think, of the digital transformation that we've got customers and consumers and producers that exchange on digital platforms, stuff they've never thought about exchanging before. Think about Get Your Guide, think about Airbnb, and think especially about Google with their search platform. I think this is really something that changed the business. If you look at it from a from a business point of view, then you see what's happening. We've got a winner-takes-all situation that we've got a lot of small platforms and we've got only some that are really big, but these will be the ones that you need to deal with in your marketing strategy. You need to go to Google, you will need to be on Facebook, and the question is how far your interests really can be reflected in the activities that you do there. And from our point of view, if we look at what the options are dealing with those platforms, we see similarities as we, we did a lot of research with highly concentrated retailer industries. And um, from my point of view, one of the key challenges is why don't you pay a little bit power, a power game with some of these guys? Because sometimes they need you more than you need them. But this is not what they tell you, but you should elaborate on that. Or you partner with them or you just play a provider, but then you might be not the right proper way of dealing with those platforms in your strategy. Tools, very briefly, as an overview to what we've been doing in St. Gain for many, many years, we applied a framework where we said we've got four major activity, fields of activity. It's messaging, which is performance marketing. It's engagement, which goes into contributing customers, really contribute with their own actions. We talk about sharing, which is sort of like a viral marketing campaign, and then communities and the network part. We call this the normal buckets for marketing, like a little bit like marketing instruments. But we think that this is really something that we should reflect on as part of the digital marketing framework. On the other end, if we go for knowledge generation, we will hear a lot about this with the data and data-driven organization that will be coming up within this week. And many call this oil is the new data. It's the seed that we're using um, for being more attractive for um, being more attractive um, as a company and finding a new way of to new resources. One of the biggest misunderstanding that I'm always getting when, I, when we're working with corporations and with, with executives and with students, is always that data is already the holy grail. From our point of view, there's a little bit more to that. Data is not information. Information becomes data if you structure it. Information becomes knowledge if you can apply it and you learn something out of it when it changes your behavior. And it's not intelligence if you put it into action as part of your business. And this is why we're saying we have the core idea of analytics when we look at marketing and then analytics. This is out of a PhD study done two years ago by Kala Taba. And we applied a framework where you said advanced analytics companies, data science activities, they run around the circle between generating data, information, processing that, building knowledge and disseminate that knowledge into the company. And doing that over different fields, I just jump over this because I'm a little bit behind on the time schedule. 
This really leads for us to, the, to, to one of the major challenges that we apply that data that we found into the world of our marketing actions. Not by just analyzing ourselves to death, but understanding that we can take different actions on the way to our customers. And the basic idea that is below, behind a lot of discussions that we're having right now with, uh, with, uh, with corporations is <clears throat> that many still act upon the classical plan to check act framework of strategy building of strategic planning. I like the idea. I think it's worthwhile investing a lot in planning and trying to understand the options. And I'm a big fan of having options. But if we look at the, in the actual situation that we have in the marketing field nowadays, and we look in the field of marketing and digital in the moment, I would say, do we really understand our market and competitors to the full? I wouldn't agree. Do we know all the options that might be possible in the near future or in the coming times? No, we can't. We are in a field that is developing rapidly. Do we have all KPIs defined? Can we define what the return on digital is? From my point of view, we're far away from that one. Even if Sven Reinecke, my colleague at the Institute, doesn't like that. But I think we find some KPIs, but we haven't got the full bucket. And do we have a plan B? Do we know what we do to mitigate, mitigate risk? I don't think so. And this leads to the situation that you find in many companies in the Silicon Valley, or as a mantra in research, when you talk to Larry Leifer from the, from the D school, he always says, don't tell me what you think, show me that it works. So you, we work with prototypes, or you do the Google stuff, N equals one doesn't, does not count, which means your opinion is nice. If you've got 5,000 people that behave like you, then we've got empirical evidence. And last but not least, the old quote from, from Mark Zuckerberg that is always saying, prototypes solve arguments. I don't need to fight arguments with you if you can show me that it works. And this leads to the different understanding on how we should work in marketing. It takes us back to something that we already know from the 60s, but we got rid of it somewhere in the, in the 90s of saying prototypes, we don't need them anymore. We need to do that again. We need to check and test and find out what works in an iterative, iterative process that takes iteration as the core of the understanding. You see it here on several examples. The bottom left, that is the first mock-up of an iPod that Steve Jobs design, um, designers did, James Ivey, and it was made out of wood. It worked perfectly for the purposes of understanding how, what is good to handle. You see the Gillette shavers over there, and you see the part of an ATM out of Singapore on the upper right side. The point that I want to make with this is, we need to find different ways of looking at marketing activities. It's normal to do A-B testing, especially for you guys that are in the field. They know that this is the classical way of, of treating that topic. On the other hand, this has huge consequences of what we don't want, what we're doing in marketing. The first thing is we need to arrange our activities differently. And we've been doing this with Google for now three to four years, where Google was saying we need to have a different approach. We can't start with analysis. We need to start with something that companies lead into the market and test something and try to make a bold first move to really find out what's really working. And on the basis of what the activities are that you do, you listen to customers, you analyze the data, and then try to engage the customer in the further developments that you can use to bring your marketing forward. And this is an ongoing cycle for the classical digital marketing activities that we need to really stay in the game and stay really relevant for the customer. On the other hand, something that is just broken, breaking into marketing, that's growth hacking. And that's the idea that you find your own KPIs. You build the North Star metric where digital can help you, your business, doing on one single KPI that you might have identified, like the frequently monthly user, the FUMO, or the other, other, other ways of how you push your user engagement. And then you combine the striving for that North Star metric with the activities that we call in the broadest sense hacking. So trying to use engineering experimentation methods to find new ways of getting to our customers and doing this, and this is very important and very challenging for marketing guys, I think in many cases, we need to have this in interdisciplinary teams. We need to have engineering guys, we have data analytics, we've got marketeers, we've got communication specialists, we've got them all in one bucket doing the work on that. Breaking rules, of course, it's the example of Airbnb on Craigslist. It's the Airbnb example of taking photographers photographers to the to the flats of people in New York City to make it more attractive to book their homes. But these are the this is the stuff that would change from my point of view the way that we work in marketing in the next years tremendously. And last but not least, and this is my final point, and then I'm down to my 30 minutes that I took then. Um, it's marketing transformation. And I'm 
I'm giving you one slide that you might be still knowing out of your, um, your studies or you still refer by yourself to changes done by people. When you think about Caroline Frankenberger, when she was talking here about digital transformation, she said one of the, the most reasons why, why digital initiatives fail to 83% is people are left behind and it's just a paper where you say, hey, in six months we're fully digital. We spend 50 million and then we're full-fledged. It's the opposite. Technology is the enabler and the motivation comes from the people. So it's a change process that we need to actively involve our employees with us. And it will go down in that path, path, phase of moving. We still need to motivate them to come up to a higher degree of what we call performance then. You can criticize that model and I'm criticizing it always as I say, this is not the change perspective as is. This is the one thing that changes if you try to change something. The realistic perspective is this one that you do change by change by change by change by change by change. And you will always have to deal with those downturns. And this is why, why I would like to stop my presentation with a simple quote from somebody still people like. I admire him for his strategies, and that's Jeff Bezos. Day two is decline followed by death. That is why it's always day one. And I think we can apply that to marketing in the next years very, very, um, briefly and very sound because I think this is what we're seeing. We need to be much more flexible. We need to be much more innovative. And for that stuff, I hope that digital marketing frame will help you, helps you a lit, little to, to frame the core questions, try to get a grasp on what digital marketing should mean. So I thank you for your attention. Hopefully it was digestible as a good lunch. And I'm looking forward to your Q&As. Thank you so much. Thank you, Marcus, for your presentation. I will stop the screen sharing. Some questions have already come in. Okay. Please go ahead and send us more questions. I will scroll through those questions. Some technical, some rather high level. Oh Let's uh, start with a um, rather high level question. Um, how do you actually embed the digital fr marketing framework into the overall marketing or business framework? Yeah. Five years ago, I would have said, take your digital marketing team of three to five people and just let them run the digital marketing framework. Nowadays, I would say you need to involve the whole marketing department that you have in your corporation. This digital marketing frame should help you to find places in the customer journey where digital plays a major role. And this means, from, me, from my point of view, we need to be much, much more focused on where the action is with the customer and not so much on the digital side. And then we add digital to our classical marketing. This means this framework, and we've been then doing this in in-house programs over the last two to three years with that framework, that framework should help everybody in the corporation to understand the digital challenge and not only the digital guys. You need to integrate it and you bring it to life best if everybody is involved in bringing that to life question from one of your colleagues. Uh, <laughs> seems that the customer journey is always given, but isn't the, no. the high art to steer this journey as far as possible? If yes, do you have some recommendations? Yeah, I would say that the customer journey is not given at all. I would say that the customer journey is something that you need to decide on which kind of parts of, of the journey you want to support and where you see that you can play a major role. The example that I gave you um, with those two flights of a humblebee, there's another one that I blended out that I thought it would be too much. And this is the inspiration phase, for instance. This is always a good example. Do you as a company really, can you inspire your customers to search for your products? Can you inspire customers that, that they will turn to your webpage? I don't think so in many cases. You need to react much more. And this is you focus the money somewhere else than just building awareness. You need to be there where your customers are. So from my point of view, what I think what the huge challenge in the whole game is, you need to identify it, as I called it in the presentation, the interactions hubs, which are important for your customer and where you as a company is playing to as giving a value to the customer. We will have an article on that in some of the magazines in the next months exactly on that topic because it's true. You can't follow up on the whole customer journey. It's much too, too challenging. Thank you. Um, how or where would you even start with the framework in the organization? What I would try to do, and I did this in many cases with the, with the, with the board or with the marketing with the, with the marketing head, we try to start out with the understanding that digital marketing is necessary within the corporation. The fun thing, as I try to put it that way, is for your customers, it's the obvious. 
for the marketing department, it's an option. And for the corporation, it's something, well, we need to do the other stuff first. We need to get profit and all that stuff. And I'm with Caroline Frankenberger here. You need to start early into that one. And I would do is I would, I would try to do it in a change project. As I say, what is the call to action? What is the reason why we need to change? And then introduce within the transformation, the part of digital and then in digital marketing. And then we're coming into that, what I wanted to present to you. Mm -hmm. Question about the prototypes. Yeah. Um, any suggestions for a global player that has worldwide reach and hence struggles to geofence prototyping, both geographically and segment-wise? It was easier in, in the analog-wise uh, world, but what do we now? Yeah, well, um, I would differentiate different phases for um, for that for that idea of prototyping. What I'm doing always that I'm saying there's a span between R and D work, doing first prototypes, doing the first use case, going for the rollout to having it in place within the line. Um, the funny thing about digital from my point of view is, and we did a lot of those tests in the automotive industry with a car producer called BMW. And um, what we did with them, we did, we caught that, I need to do that in Germany because we can't do it in English. We did the little Schweinereien in certain markets where we saw a lot of acceptance for digital and then we tried to test in that environment certain stuff and field test to show more that is really working. So we came down to mobile marketing already in 2006 as it worked in Korea very well. We talked about gaming to introduce the one series by 2008. So we were playing always in little fields of real world prototypes to bring them to life as, as soon and as early as possible. If the kleine Schweinerein works, then you can get to the bigger ones and then you can establish it at testing team or in customer experience team as you see it, for instance, at OCBC in Singapore as a bank that is, has a whole customer experience department doing that prototypes. Right, yeah, very uh, basic questions, uh, question, uh, yet profound. <laughs> um, to, to generate to, to, uh, a digital marketing concept in a Swiss SME, which yeah. has uh, never done online marketing yeah. before, yeah. where yeah. do you even start? You don't start with digital. You start with the customer problem. When you can identify a challenge or a need with a customer that you need to serve or that is a potential that you can serve within the project that you're doing for that, you would do a classic or a marketing strategy or positioning that needs to involve the digital activities that your customer is already doing. And this, again, could start very well with analyzing the customer journey where you've been having weak spots in the last years because you couldn't tap your customer. Nowadays, you can over digital activities. And then you start to build the concept with digital ingredients, but not only a digital concept. Please don't do that. It's the most wrong way of doing nowadays from our point of view. Here's one more for the B2B. Mm -hmm. um, participants usually you deal with purchasing departments right. uh, IT guys and so on and yeah. do not communicate so much via Facebook to yeah. see uh, what difference could digital make there uh, the difference is huge because your customers are already doing it and move away from Facebook move into LinkedIn that's the that's a blunt answer to b2b situations but if you look at how many people are already when you look at the data that LinkedIn okay they're supplying the data by themselves but if you look how LinkedIn has evolved over the last two to three years, then it's, it's, it's a place for B2B contacts. And from my point of view, being there is one of the first starting points where you need to be found. This was going to be the one of the first place where we, people will search for you. They will search you on Google and they will search you on your web page. And one of the most important things that you need to be, be actual on your web page. There's one example of a company that, um, that we had in one of our seminars and the B2B marketing had said, we had the problem that people were coming up with an RFP to us and said, please refer to the price list of 2016 and not your newest ones because this is the one that they found on the web and not the newest one on the web page. So they were all referring to the old prices. You need to be actual. If you're not on point on time with the factual information that you want to have in the market right now, your guys on the other side, they will get to you immediately. And by the way, the first guys that go online because they don't need to talk to you are the purchasing department. They will go online before you even notice them. This is where they get their own information and they have the spreadsheet ready when they call you. And when they call you, you're lucky because you're the remaining free that will get an RFP. Mm -hmm. And is there a specific starting point in a B2B setting where you sell through your customers to the consumer? I'm not quite sure if you need to sell digital. 
there's a concept that we call the moments of truth and there's a concept called the zero moment of truth and the zero moment of truth means you need to be found online if you just take, take the data that i showed you and the informal data that i refer to with 75 percent of all customer searches online or product purchases that are done physically like or digital are pre-researched online then i think the first and foremost important thing is that you are found that you communicate what your customer needs to know about you and that you will help him to find the proper information about you. Otherwise, you will end up with 25% of your customers just knowing you because they didn't went digital. And from then onwards, we can talk in different steps of moving onwards into a sale. I don't think that it substitutes the sale. And in some cases, there's one example, I can give you the KDV in Berlin, and it's now B2B, B2C, but that department store now belongs to Larina Schente and some Thai families. Um, they stopped their e-commerce activities almost by to 100% because they said, we want to have the people in the store. This is where they should buy. If it is the best strategy, I don't know. But I think it's an adequate answer to the question, how much do you sell digital? I don't think it's selling first. It's really preparing your customers for doing the right choice and choosing you as a potential partner, as a supplier. Then in a digital world, should a CMO be a more data analyst or more creative strategist? <laughs> <laughs> um, you need to be able to talk to the information system people. You need to be able of understanding what has changed in digital. You need to be able to translate, no, to define your challenges from a marketing point of view and help the digital specialists to understand your challenge. This is how far we need to take it. The same question I get from the data guys, they always say, do I need to know to understand marketing? I says, yes, of course you need to do. You need to understand segmentation, you need to understand positioning, because we will collaborate on that basis within the corporation. So both sides need, need to work closer together. You will find now CMOs that are more coming from the data side. You will see some coming more from the creative side. I don't think we have the answer still yet. You can go from both sides. But for us as marketeers, as I suppose you're as mid-aged as me, we need to work on the digital side. By the way, I'm just reading Python for dummies, just that you see how illiterate I am. So it's necessary that we do that, yes. I think our time is about up. So this okay. was a very nice last question because we have <laughs> two more webinars coming up in this week on uh, data and machine learning. So maybe check those out to us as well. And um, yes, thank you so much for tuning in and for your questions. We will send around the presentation slide deck as well as the link to the recording. Give us one or two weeks to do that. We need to edit that. And uh, do you have any last words? No, as I said, you will get a, you will get a questionnaire on a, on a digital marketing health check from us with some recommendations for some literature. And if you're looking for something that might be worthwhile investigating within your corporation, St. Gallen is always open for corporation. Give us a call, give us an email. Uh, we're open to anything. And if you've got feedback on the framework where you say there's something missing, we're always open because I said version 3.0 is coming up. And um, thank you for spending your lunch with us. Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you. you from me as well. Have a nice afternoon.